y'all. As promised, this is going to be my video talking about the medication Cytotec. Um, so if you are starting with this video, I would go and watch the Cervidil video and then come and watch the Cytotec video after. Um, so like I always say, I am not a doctor, I'm not a nurse practitioner, I'm a labor nurse, and I'm just here to provide education so that you feel confident going into your labor process, that you at least have an idea of what to expect and what's happening. Um, since a lot of times this is the first time that you've, um, I feel like a lot of women are super healthy that go and have a baby, not all of them obviously, but a lot of them haven't been to the hospital and haven't had to obviously deal with any of these labor medications before. And so it's good to just have an idea of what you're putting into your body and how it affects your pregnancy and your baby and your labor. So, Cytotec. Cytotec is used to dilate your cervix, like I said before, um, aka called a cervical ripening agent, if you really want to know. Um, so, this, how it differs from Cervidil. It is technically not FDA approved for cervical ripening. It is FDA approved for stomach ulcers. I know, weird. But it is often used for cervical ripening. It's just important that you kind of know that. Um, as I talked about in the Cervidil video, one of the side effects that we look for when we're inducing a woman is for the contractions if they get too close together and if the baby reacts with their heart rate. That is the sim. Uh, side attack has very, very similar side effects and reactions, but because um, the heart rate responded more likely and the contractions were more likely to respond when this drug is used, it's not FDA approved for that reason. Again, I mean, to each his own, just know that that's why. Um, this drug, though, is a lot less expensive, significantly less expensive than Cervidil, um, which is, I mean, possibly why a lot of people use it. So this is a pill. Um, it's really, really, really small. It's given in super small doses um, for inducing for labor. And it is also inserted vaginally. So it's during a vaginal exam, it's placed really, really far back, um, usually as close to the cervix as possible. Um, this one requires you to lay down for about 30 minutes to an hour after it's given. It is given every three to four hours and you can be given one dose up to, I've seen it most five, but again, it's kind of up to the prescriber and how many they wanna give you. So. It's a really small dosage. It can be given every three to four hours. Um, and it's again, to cause your cervix to dilate. So things to kind of expect is that you will be continuously monitored because of those side effects of the tachycystole, meaning too many contractions, and then the baby um, reacting. So fetal distress, AKA baby's heart rate reacting to the medication. So those are things that the nurse is looking for on his or her end, usually a her, but you know, don't want to discriminate. Um, and so those are things that we look for as nurses to make sure that the baby isn't responding negatively um, and what to expect on your end in regards to like your body is the same almost as Cervidil is that it just has those small cramps. Like it just feels kind of uncomfortable and crampy. Um, it's not those really strong contractions. Now, have I? is it possible to deliver just off of Cytotec? Sure, I, yes, I mean, there are things that have happened. Is that the purpose of it? No, but um, you can never say never really with anything. So usually the purpose of it is to dilate your cervix and then later on in your induction process is when most of the time Pitocin will be started and that is what you'll be on until baby is delivered most of the time. Um, the one also downside about Cytotec is that it cannot be removed. So once the medication is placed, it is placed and if baby reacts to it, we don't have a way to remove it, we just have a way to respond. So there's a medication we can give like to basically reverse what, side, what the Cytotec is doing, but most of the time we'll start with position changes, fluid, oxygen, all that kind of stuff um, before we use another medication because um, most of the time, the medication that we would have to introduce would kind of stop labor. And if we're inducing someone, we want them to have the baby because there's a medical reason that the woman should have the child. So yeah, I hope that that kind of makes sense um, to be able to kind of see the difference between Cytotec and Cervidil and make sure you have that conversation, like I said before, 
with your um, with your doctor, or your midwife, or your nurse practitioner. Um, make sure you talk about those medications. Ask them which one they use, especially if you are having those conversations about needing to be induced. Whether that's because you're getting past your due date, and, or they're afraid baby's gonna be too big. I mean, that's a whole nother video about like what is considered a medical induction. But have those conversations of what medications are you planning on using, and if they choose to use Cervidil, why they don't like Cytotec, or why they prefer Cervidil, or vice versa. Um, and if you have a preference, communicate that. Um, do your own research so that you can speak up for yourself. And if you would rather just go with the um, advice of the um, your prescriber, because obviously this is what they do for a living, just make sure that you um, ask them lots of questions if you want to feel more informed about that. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening. Um, I'll continue on with my um, medication series because there are so many medications that can be given during labor, but I've kind of hit on the main ones that we use for inductions, just because I feel like that's a pretty common practice um, for women who are being induced for those medical reasons and stuff like that. So yeah, please like and subscribe, share your um, share these videos with your friends or any ladies that you know that are going to be having babies soon. Um, and I hope to continue to provide um, some education so that you feel more comfortable as you walk into your um, hospital to have that babe. All right, great. Thanks, guys.